first things first is we need storage. So that's what I'm working on. I've already started it. You can see a little bit where I'm going to be using 8020 throughout this whole build or aluminum extrusion. And I'm going to be building some shelves out of this. So my plan is this is just the start. I had to make up these brackets. There's the, you know, stock eight millimeter thread alettes that are welded in right here, here, and over there. Um, I had to make up these angle brackets for the 10 series, which is what I'm gonna be using for this. And for most of my build is gonna be 10 series, 8020. Um, because when you do the 10 series and you use just the regular angle brackets like this, if you use these and you try and use like an eight millimeter, you won't be able to get the other bolt through the hole, which is kind of a bummer. But um, I made these brackets up, just bought a full piece of um, angle iron from the hardware store, or you can get it, I got it at Granger. And you just cut it up, drill the holes where you need it, make your own custom brackets so that you can fit stuff on there. So it'll, Imagine it being looking like a cabinet. This is the framing. So there's gonna be another piece that comes out here And then there's gonna be another piece that comes a 90 up and then there's gonna be a rail that goes across the ceiling here It attaches to these ribs here one two and three and these holes are already here um, I just had to widen them out a little bit with a 25 by 60 fourths uh, drill bit so that they can fit the quarter 20 rib nuts is what I'm going to be using for most of this build. Um, and I'm going to rib nut these stock locations and then I'm going to run a bar across and then go from there. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, spray painting a little rust reformer in here with a Q-tip and I'm going to just coat the holes that I drilled for the rib nuts um, just to extra precaution for any rust or anything like that. You know, it's probably overkill, but we're gonna do it anyway, just because. Even though the rib nuts do dig in behind the metal, that's what a lot of people don't talk about. The rib nut, when it squishes up, it digs into the backside of the metal anyway, but whatever. I mean, cover it up just to have peace of mind so you're not worried about rust, you know, in your van. I'll let those holes dry a little bit. So, get this rib nut tool. You can buy it at, like, I bought it at Granger actually. Uh, it's a quarter 20. And then I'm just kind of cheating. I'm using the impact with a socket on there. It goes a little bit faster. Um, I know some purists are like, oh, you can't tell what's done, but whatever. I don't have time to make 22 turns with an open end wrench. And I'm using channel locks just so I can hold on to it, not have to deal with something falling off or keeping pressure on it. I can just hold it like this. And boom, you got a nut. All right, I got the upper cabinet framing kind of preloaded with these brackets that I made. And these two are gonna go that way, so they're gonna be inside the cabinet. This one's gonna be this way, because as you can see over here, um, I had to cut away right here at the headliner a little bit. And this factory hole that is back here where I put these rib nuts is actually the spot where the trim piece has the uh, pushing tab. So I don't want to use up that hole here. So I'm going to just angle the bracket that way, drill a new hole and put a new rib nut in here. Once you put the 8020 up there, it's pretty well even with the headliner. So I think I'm just going to have to cut a notch in the trim piece and it should be good.
frame all in. Came out pretty good. It's a few things I would uh, do differently next time probably. But overall I think it came out pretty well. I kind of started from because I wanted to use the factory holes. So if I had not been too picky about the holes that I used, um, next time I would probably just assemble it like you see it on the ground and then have somebody else help hold it and then mark the holes and just put the riv nuts in um, wherever they land. I mean, you can kind of guesstimate, but trying to land and use the factory holes, as you can see here, you know, made the assembly harder because trying to get this to end up square and then come up with this measurement here because this wanted to, you know, sway this way, this wanted to sway that way. So you wanted to make sure that they were square. So getting this measurement so that they would make it square, how I did that was basically take a square and hold it up in here like that so that both you can see it's resting on top of that angle bracket and it's resting on top of that angle bracket and then having that space between there and having that on that upright told me that it's square and you measure at that point from point to point and that gave me this dimension right here for the brackets to go across so you may notice that I used these brackets here on the corners, um, flat brackets. Well, you know, why didn't I use them everywhere? Why didn't I use them in here to make it, you know, a little bit stronger the way it is? Well, because the base of these cabinets is going to be quarter inch birch plywood, which I'll finish, and it'll fit right in the channel. I may add door fronts at one time, at, at some point, but for now it's just gonna be open like that and I'll run bungees across or something like that just to keep helmets and gear and all that stuff in there. And um, if I have to, I don't know if they sell a fully flat angle bracket, uh, right angle like this. If not, I'll just trace on the back side if this and just cut it out if I wanna add cabinet doors later. But now, the last thing that I'm going to do, now that I got it all assembled, is I'm going to plant this rib nut, mark it, drill it, set it, and then the framing will be done. I got that uh, last hole drilled for the rib nut. Just a word of caution, when you're drilling in your van, make sure you use a collar like that. And make sure you get it tight. Because this thin sheet metal, when you drill through it, with a sharp drill bit like that, a lot of times it tends to grab the bit and wants to pull it in. And the last thing you want to do is drill a hole up through the roof of your brand new van or even a used van. Doesn't matter. Who wants holes in their van? Nobody. So I got my birch plywood here, quarter inch. Um, gonna be measuring and cutting it to inset into the 8020. And as you can see, it sits in the 8020 about 5 sixteenths. And just remember you have to double that measurement for each side. So it would be an extra 10 sixteenths, so 5 eighths on the total length of your measurement on the inside, from the inside of the 8020, inside to inside. Now that I got the plywood cut, I can just rotate this out of the way. And test fit my plywood. Finish edge down. That. See if I measured right. I 
like? What do you think? Looks awesome. So, looks good. Put some uh, coats of poly on it, dress it up a little bit. Use a tack cloth to get all that off, and then we'll have bottoms to our shelves. Just putting a few coats of poly on the boards before I put them in the shelves. Made some end caps as well that I'll just I'll just bolt onto the end of the shelves. So we'll have to do like four or five coats and let these dry and go from there. So I cut all the pieces. Obviously, you know that already. Um, didn't want to bore you with the details, but I put about four coats of water-based oil modified um, polyurethane, just clear on the uh, birch just to give it a little bit of protection, a little bit smoother, make it look a little better. Now for the most tedious part is this gasket material that goes in here. And what that'll do is, you know, here this side, I don't want that going down the road. Here this side, you can't do it because it's got this gasket that kind of squeezes into the 80-20 uh, channel. And over here, that's gonna bug you if you're driving or something like that. But this gasket material over here gets right in there. But it's a really big pain to get in there. You literally have to like stretch it a little bit and then you have to push down on it and then push in with your fingers. And your fingers are gonna be really sore by the time you're done. I'm contemplating just doing little sections, but then I gotta kinda, kinda got into a rhythm. So I'm just gonna do the whole thing and. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but we'll see how it looks when it's done. Alright, so a few days later, just trying to finish these off. I've got the end panels kind of going on here, and I'm just going to trace around here because it's a little too tight. What I did was I actually took this cover off, which is the wiring harness cover, and I trace it on the plywood on the floor and then it got caught a little bit too tight as you can see so I'm just uh, scribing it in a little bit closer so I can get it in there. I got it kind of trimmed to fit around the wiring harness cover but one thing I'm going to do is later on I'm going to have ceiling panels that kind of come down and follow the contour of the uh, beam members here so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim these with that contour so that when I go to do that later I won't have to really trim them much I may have to take like a quarter inch off later but what I'm doing is basically just tracing a line I don't know if you can see it up there tracing a line with the pencil and just kind of like scribing it like this you know what I mean holding it up against the framing members and I'll probably go a little bit strong on it, maybe like an extra eighth of an inch, quarter inch, so that I can kind of, later on I'll slide the ceiling panel in there. And uh, I'll be able to do that without having to take this off, cut it, and all that stuff. Alright, so now I cut the contour of the, uh, that cabinet. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking the other end, kind of putting them together, lining up the front edges of the cabinet, and just using this one to trace the contour of the other one. Alright, we got one mounted. As you can see, I put in these L brackets and then mount it on that end panel. And I get the black screws showing. I don't think it looks too bad. Um, one thing that saves you with these things is these little drop in T nuts. That you can see that go in the channel so you don't have to take everything apart to get it in there all right got them pretty much as done as i'm gonna get them for now get everything on i get the headliner trim piece back on that i just cut out as you can see they didn't cut it out much because honestly the ceiling is going to come here later and i'm probably going to end up cutting this all the way out like this later so the ceiling panels can go under there but not worry about that right now 
just wanted these shelves up so I could have some functionality of where to put stuff. And then the black stuff on the bottom, this is just, you know, like stuff from Home Depot, the uh, tool drawer liner rubber that I just cut the size and basically that'll keep anything from being able to slide around, mostly helmets and stuff like that. Well, that's it for now. I'll end up putting some, probably some eyelets in here like this. I just ran out of uh, drop-in T-nuts. I'll get some more. Probably just run some bungees across here so stuff can't slide out for now. I don't know if I'll put drawers or, or cabinet doors or not. I don't know. We'll see. All right, that's it for now. Um, remember to hit that like, subscribe button down at the bottom. Um, things I would have done differently um, now that I've done them is you know i'm not too impressed how it came out with the edge here but i've got some quarter inch uh you know panel edging it's on its way it's just not here yet but overall happy the way it came out and uh why i didn't go with the smooth channel and stuff like that is because i want to be able to mount i want the option to be able to mount anything on here whenever i want you know whether it be you know putting some mounts for you know a snowboard going across here or something underneath i just wanted the versatility and i don't think it looks bad at all with the you know 80 20 profile i know a lot of people use the smooth channel and they get rid of the ones that you know they just have the flat front for more finished look for a cabinet but overall i'm going for more function than you know than beauty i guess you could say but I think it still looks pretty good the way it came out.